It's an honor to be speaking here in Hanzhou, although I'm here in the Silicon Valley, but um, I'm so pleased to be speaking to a conference in Hanzhou because it brings back one of my best memories of China. Um, it was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. It was a long time ago, and I was on a trip um, from Shanghai to Hanzhou. It was about a three-hour drive, and along the drive, I saw all these houses, and they were all exactly the same, and they were getting very boring because it was three hours long. But then I saw one that had these big blue windows, and all the other houses were concrete till-ups with no windows, but this one had blue windows, beautiful blue windows, and a spire and a driveway coming into it, a paved driveway, um, because most of the driveways were, were dirt roads. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what that's about. And then we kept going and we saw, I saw another blue window and another spire and another driveway. And then I saw another blue window and a spire and a driveway. And I thought, first thing I thought was, wow, that blue window salesman is gonna make a fortune. But then the second thing that I thought was, wow, China is going to explode. Amazing, amazing things are gonna happen in this country. And, uh, and that was what got me to first start thinking about investing in China. Uh, and at one point, I, um, I met with the Minister of Finance in China and, and he said, invest in my country. And I said, I'm not gonna invest in your country. You, I met with this guy who built a chocolate company and that chocolate company was nationalized. And he, it was a $90 million chocolate company. And so he was not able to benefit from all the hard work he did. So the minister said, well, what would you recommend? And I said, well, look, I would recommend that anyone who invests in your country from wherever they are should, um, if they're able to make money with that investment, to let them take that money back to their country and tell all their friends that they've invested in that country and then you'll see more money than you ever imagined. Uh, more money will come into China than you ever imagined. And lo and behold, I think that minister was listening and I think China took that advice and rolled with it. And boy, did China have a boom time for the last 40 or 50 years. Now, uh, we've gotten, we've, a lot of things have happened in the meantime. We've, a lot of great businesses have been created. And now uh, we're at this amazing time where once the internet came through, it transformed all these major industries, the communications, information, uh, gaming, entertainment, all of that was transformed by the internet. And it came along with a blockchain and smart contracts and, uh, and then artificial intelligence has started to, to become more and more like a human. And surveillance is really important. And if you put all those technologies together, you have the potential as entrepreneurs to transform the world, to change the biggest industries in the world, to change how banking is done, to see how, change how insurance is done, commerce, finance, my own industry. I have a vision of the future where I can uh, raise money all in Bitcoin, put it all on a smart contract on the blockchain, and have my, my companies pay their employees. And we have a good I, um, way of identifying if a company's going into trouble early. We, have, uh, we keep perfect records. Uh, all that without the friction of the auditor, the accountant, the bookkeeper, or the lawyer, or the whatever. Uh, instead, we have this, this complete system that is all put together um, under a Bitcoin blockchain smart contract system. I think this is the wave of the future. So I, um, I encourage you entrepreneurs to think, hey, how can we make this work? And I hope that the governments of the U.S. and China and all the other governments of the world start to realize it, we're all together. We're all on this, this big round ball that we, we're all interconnected. We all have um, the same needs, the same aspirations, and, uh, and, and we all hope for 
uh, more freedom, more personal freedom, and more trust. And if you put those two things together, you will have one of the most booming economies in the world. You put freedom together with trust and you will have a bonanza of a, of a great success. This is a very difficult time and it's a difficult time for governments to get their hands around it and to figure out what to do. But I think by trusting their people, trusting them to do the right thing, uh, their people will respond to that trust and, and all of us will be better off. And so I, I highly recommend that you encourage your, your government to trust their people. Um, and, uh, and, it's, and I also think that we really need to, to bring that olive branch back to the U.S. I think we need the U.S. and China to start getting, getting along, the, the governments of the U.S. and China start getting along. The people already do but the governments need to get along so that we, we work together uh, and, and continue to build on this amazing relationship that we've had for these 40, 50 years. Uh, you know, I, I really encourage this to happen. Um, it's probably not what you expected from this talk, but I think we're all gonna benefit from it. So uh, I, I look forward to doing many, many more business deals in China. I look forward to a, a really amazing relationship. I look forward to trading uh, technologies, trading uh, uh, products, uh, operating together and improving the world together. Thank you for your time. Uh, have a great conference and, uh, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing all you at some point soon.